truly the Lord our God is amazing. I'm so glad that you have connected to us with us in worship. We are the church that we say we are caring, connecting, cultivating, and changing lives with a spirit of excellence. And we pray uh, that you are blessed by the ministry. Pray that you are being blessed by the ministry. I want to thank all of those who continue to sow seeds of generosity that has a heart for the house of God. I pray that, that you would take all notice of all of our ways that you can sow seed. This is good ground. This is good ground. And so I want you to take a minute and look at all the platforms and ways that you can sow and show love and generosity. One of the ways that we show our faith is by sowing. I sow. I give. Because I know no, I can't be God-given no matter how hard I try. Every time I give, he comes back in a way that blesses my life. And so I encourage you to sow a seed uh, on this morning or today. I uh, pray that you would sow a seed. And again, thank you for all those who continue to sow seeds of generosity. God bless you. We are in the Lenten season and where we are on our Lenten fast. Be able to remember what we are doing. We are, every day, seven minutes of devotion, seven bottles of water, and no fried food. We can do this, all right? During this Lenten season, we are doing, again, seven minutes each day of devotion, seven bottles of water, and no fried food. But why no fried food? Well, we're getting all that grease and clutter out of our physical system, but I believe also God is doing the same thing spiritually. The Bible says, lay aside those weights that so easily beset us. And we want to make sure that we declutter so that we can be renewed. The water symbolizes God renewing us, renewing our bodies, but renewing our hearts and our souls back to him. Seven is a number of completion. Seven is the number of perfection. And so I'm asking you for this Lenten season to join me to join me, seven days of devotion, seven minutes of devotion, seven bottles of water, and no fried food. Can you do this? This Tuesday at 6.15, meet me at Facebook Live so that we can pray together. This week, this Tuesday at 6.15, Facebook Live, we're going to pray together. God bless you.
Thank you again for joining and being part of our worship today. I am so glad that you are part. It would not be the same unless you were connected. Won't you go ahead and like and share, let everybody know that you are in worship. Let us turn our attention to the book of Genesis, Genesis, the 32nd chapter, beginning at verse 24. Now, you don't need no index for the book of Genesis. Uh, it should be clear where Genesis is, but if you do need some help, uh, make sure you're in Sunday school, all right? Genesis, the 32nd chapter and verse 24 says, So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he could not overcome him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched and he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go until you bless me. I will not let you go until you bless me. Father, in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray for every person that is connected and watching. I pray, God, that you would center our hearts and our minds so that we will be receptive to your word. Cultivate our hearts for your glory. I pray now that you would preach to my heart so I can preach to the heart of your people. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. In Jesus' name, One of my favorite quotes by Martin Luther King goes like this. If you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, keep moving. These words by Dr. King so perfectly describe the African-American soldier by the name of Lawrence George who was in the Vietnam War. He was facing death in a fury ambush and he risked, it, he risked his life so that his fellow soldiers could live. Despite being wounded twice himself, Joel crawled for more than 12 hours through an unceasing enemy fire. He banded, he banded up his own wounds and gave himself a shot of morphine then he hobbled along a makeshift crutch. Ignoring the calls from his commanders to stay down, he moved about 13 soldiers from out of harm's way. One of those soldiers uh, was, was, had a wound in their chest and he was able to make a makeshift bandage to keep their lungs from deflating. Within the, within the enemy, within the range of the enemy, only 30 feet away, he, he sustained the fate to keep fighting. When he was being honored as the first medic to earn the Medal of Honor during Vietnam, he was quoted as saying, I don't consider myself a hero. I just consider myself a soldier doing their job and not letting go of the fight. Oh God, not, 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 not letting go of the fight. Can, can you just encourage yourself and encourage someone by typing, don't let go. Don't, don't, don't let go. That's why you tuned in today because you need to hear these words. Don't let go. Maybe you say, I don't need to hear that today, but you will tomorrow. But you need to hear that. Don't let go. I know it can be tempting to throw in the towel, but don't let go. It might be challenging now, but don't let go. Brothers and my sisters, as we peruse this text, that is exactly what Jacob does. He stays in the fight and doesn't let go. After tricking his brother Esau, he had to fight from his familiar area of home, to his conniving uncle Laban's house, where he was deceived into marrying Leah when he wanted Rachel. He then had to work 14 years for Rachel's hands in marriage. 
his wages were stolen. He is undermined by Laban. Then, then Jacob and his family are chased out of the land because now their life is in danger. Now Jacob was standing between past struggle with Laban and the impending struggle of reconciling with Esau. Now in our text, he, he finally gets alone, some alone time, only to be awakened by an awakening and thrust into a wrestling match from an unidentified being. Uh, he, he has, it's very interesting because he is alone, but now he is thrust into a wrestling match. But what grabs my attention that in spite of all his previous battles and disappointments that he had to endure, his only response to his present attack is, I won't let go until you bless me. You would think after fighting and escaping home, fighting to marry the woman he loved, and after fighting for survival of his wages, and after all of that, he should be tired, he should be weak, he should be worn out. But somehow, in spite of all of that, he still finds enough strength, enough fight in him to face his present reality. And this is what he says, I won't let you go. I want to encourage somebody that when life has thrown you hard punches and every day you seem like you have to duck and dive from the life, from the swings of life that comes to you. And when unexpected trouble knocks the wind out of you, I want to encourage you not to let go, but, but find your fight and keep on going. Huh? Oh God, find your fight and don't let go. Uh, now, 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 now this test. This test, this fight for Jacob is unique. It's different from his previous challenges. Yeah, th th this, the uniqueness of this fight is that Jacob is not supposed to merely survive the fight, but he has to come out better. It's not merely surviving, but he has to become better after the fight. How, how, how do I? Become better after the fight. Mm. How do I become better after the fight? Oh, number one, number one, you've got to embrace the season of solitude as an opportunity to renew your strength. I'll say it again because I'll make sure you get it. Embrace the season of solitude as an opportunity to renew your strength. The Bible said he was left alone. Jacob was left alone. He was in the city Jabakai. Jabakai, it implies struggle. It's defined as struggle or, or passing over. He sent his family across the river, but he is here by himself. Jabakai was a river that flows from the east to the west some 60 miles to empty into the Jordan River. Jabakai is a place of crossing or crossing over. The border of Jabakai was the place where there was a conflict between two camps. Ironically, Jacob is in a place in his life, where he's just like the river, he's in conflict with two paths. The conflict of two pathways. And behind Jacob is a deceitful past. Before him is a new way of life. He's in a place that's considered struggle and strength. He's in a place with Contention, yet it is a place where he has to make decisive decisions. He, he is in a place where he is attacked, but yet it is a place that attracts God's attention. Jacob was, was wounded in this place. He was renamed, blessed, and made a new person in this place. 
uh, Jabaka represents for him, uh, it, it is a solitude place where God is ending one chapter of his life and beginning another one. It is that bridge between the pain of yesterday and the hope of tomorrow. And I suggest to you that, that some of us are in the place of Jabaka. We are having a Jabaka experience, oh God, where we are in solitude. But don't miss this solitude. It's an opportunity to renew your strength. Maybe God wants some alone time so, so that he can minister to you. It is a place where, where you're going to have to pour all of you out so you can get all of him. A long time with God. Uh, it is where you get, all, get away from all the busyness of life. And you unplug uh, and you get in the presence of God so that you can be renewed, renewed your body, your mind, and your soul. Uh, yeah, God, maybe God is calling us to a place to be renewed so that he can talk to us, where he can get some things out of us and pour some things in us. Maybe you feel your life is at a place of crossword, crossroad where you have to make some decisive decision. It is a place that also causes pain, but it's also a place that causes purpose. Maybe this is your season, oh God, you have to embrace Embrace this season of solitude as an opportunity to renew your strength. Jacob was wounded in that place, yet God still blessed him. I, I want to help somebody because that's where somebody is. You are in a conflict because you're in conflict about who you are and who God is calling you to be. It's a solitude place, but God wants to renew you in this place. That's why the hymnologist said, I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear. The son of God discloses. He walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share, God, and the joy we share none other shall ever no, uh, uh, if you're going to come out of this uh, better, if you're going to come out of this better, number one, embrace seasons of solitude as opportunities to renew your strength. Number two, understand that when there is no clarity of purpose, we must find comfort in God's presence. Number two, understand when there is no clarity of purpose, we must find comfort in God's presence. When we cannot find clarity, we have to find comfort in God's presence. Jacob is left alone. This angel, this man, this heavenly being thrusts him into a wrestling match. Jacob is left alone and, and he has to wrestle until daybreak. Let's look at this. It's, it's a strange story. This Jacob is wrestling with a man, but we weren't ever told who it was. We were just left with the assumption that that is either God or a messenger of God. Certainly that was Jacob's thoughts. It, 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 it was sort of a, an inbuilt mystery to this story because it all takes place, watch this, in darkness at night. And because it was dark, we don't know anything about the appearance of the man. At no point is there a description of who he was fighting. We are not given any description about the fight either. And in fact, it appears that they were fighting for hours until daybreak. The man wrestled with him until daybreak. Now, the whole event is full of mystery. It's an event that happened at night. It's an event that happened at dark. <laughs> an event without any adequate description whatsoever. But it is in the hiddenness of this story, the hiddenness of this story, that there are some really important observations. Can, can I talk to you for a minute about this? I think about how, how sometimes we cope through tests and trauma and, and things in our life. And sometimes we like the clarity of what's going on, the lack of clarity or the lack of details in this story 
is one of the most important aspects of the story. Stay with me. Imagine if you were in this fight. Wouldn't you want clarity? Wouldn't you want to know who it was? Wouldn't you don't want to know why? Of course, you, if you were in the fight, you want to know, you want to have some kind of clarity of what's going on. Jacob was sleeping and attacked in his sleep. We would want to know all the detail. We, we would want to know the identity. We, we would know, want to know the purpose. Where did they come from? We want to know the reason why this wrestling match is happening in the first place. We, we want to know exactly what is happening. Why am I in the fight? How long do I have to fight with this? How long do I have to endure this? And we will sit there because we don't want to be in mystery. We, we want clarity of what's going on in our life. And in that, it reflects something of us uh, because in our own test and struggle, we, we want to know everything that's going on. Uh, we are often confronted by emotional enemies that we really can't see. We, we're content with emotions that we can't name. We, we have fears that we can't describe. And, and very often during times of deep suffering, we, we feel completely, utterly blindsided or in the dark. We, we are just like Jacob trying to figure out what in the world is going on. Uh, how we, can we get some kind of clarity or purpose of, of what is happening? Often, we oftentimes we do battle in the dark. Often we fight uh, God and still not sure what's going on. Uh, God trying to figure out what makes sense of this and, uh, and why these things happen. Why, why did my heart have to break? Why did that have to happen to my loved one? Why did that have to happen to my child? Why did that have to happen? Sometimes we got to do battles in the dark. Uh, when there is no clarity. Uh, when there is no clarity in trying to figure things out. That's, uh, why is this happening? Uh, but this story of Jacob wrestling tells us that even in the darkness of our battles, even when there is no clarity, uh, that God is still there. I want somebody to know this uh, because you are dealing with some stuff that you don't know how to name or how to describe. You're trying to figure out how the hell did this happen to you? Why did this happen to you? What is going on? And I want you to know even when you're trying to find the purpose, know that God is right in the fight. With you, and the reason you ain't lose your mind is because his presence is with you. God, I know it's frustrating, but God is still with you. I know you don't like it, but God, I still love you. I know it breaks your heart, but God said, I'm able to do the exceeding and the abundant, all that you ask to think according to my power. God is right there in. And then in the fight with you, God, he's right there in the fight. So, so when there is no clarity, of purpose. Uh, you've got to be comforted by God's presence. <laughs> that, that, that's why people can know all the stuff you've been through and you still smiling. It's not that all my bills are paid. It's not that there's no X in my body. It's not that all my family loves me. No, no, no. But this joy that I have. The world didn't give and the world can't take it away. I want to help somebody because you're trying to figure out the next. But even while you're trying to figure out, know that God has never left you and he'll never forsake you. I, I got to go on. I, I got to go on. Oh God, oh God, if you're going to come out of, of this fight better, number one, embrace seasons of solitude as opportunities to renew your strength. Number two, recognize when there is no clarity of purpose to find God's find comfort in God's presence. Number three, understand that your next blessing is connected to your ability to stay connected. Understand that your next blessing is connected to your ability to stay connected. The man is wrestling with Jacob. Then the man says, Let me go. Jacob didn't start this fight. Man, start this fight. The angel, start this fight. And he says, let me go for it's daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go until you bless me. I want to first, I, I want to focus on the fact that Jacob said, I won't let you go. <laughs> oh God, I, now I just, I just want to pause there because you need to get that in your spirit. I won't let you go. <laughs> you, you, you need to, to remind yourself 
that God's saying to you, I won't let you go. God, I won't focus on that. I won't let you go. It, it takes tenacity to hold on. It takes maturity, maturity of faith to, to not let go of what you can't explain. Yeah, God, yeah. It, it takes faith to stay in the fight, fight that you didn't pick. It, it, it takes faith to keep holding on when you don't know who or what or why this encounter is happening. They can say, but I won't let go. I, 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 have, a, I have enough faith to know that, that if God allowed this to happen, it's going to work out for his glory. I, I have enough faith to, to hold on to, to it, to, to know that if God allowed it, uh, he wants me to endure it. I have enough faith that if God allowed it, he can trust me with it. Uh, uh, God, if, if he can trust me to bear it, uh, uh, God, I have enough faith to carry it. Uh, uh, God, and this is the thing, you got to get to a point in your faith and walk with Christ uh, that you're okay with a little bit of trouble. God ought to be able to trust some of us uh, with a little trouble. And God can trust us with some fights and some troubles uh, because he knows we won't give up uh, because trouble won't last always. Oh, God, I might have some sleepless nights, uh, emotional moments, uh, heartbreak, but I will not let go. Huh? Why don't you type that right in there and say, I will not let go. I, I will not let go. I might have to go doctor to doctor, but I will not let go. I, I, I might have uh, uh, God to say goodbye, but, but I ha won't let go. I, I might have some difficult days, but, but I won't let go. You see, if God wants us and if God wants us in this fight, then I have enough faith to believe God knows there are benefits that will come out of the fight. I won't say that again because I want to make sure you get it. If God wants us in the fight, then I have enough faith to believe that God knows there are benefits that will come out of the fight. You see, Jacob is not holding on without a purpose. Jacob is not holding on, but just some ordinary blessing. This blessing has got to be different. Now, I told you he, he was left alone. He was at the place of crossroads in his life. He was fighting something that he couldn't explain. You don't endure all of that for nothing. Oh, God, you, 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 we, you, you have a reason that you are, are still holding on. Now, after all you've been through, after all the doors that were closed in your face, after all the medical issues you had to deal with, with all the disappointments you had to deal with, you ain't holding on just because you ain't got nothing else to do. <laughs> Jacob said, I, I won't let go until you bless me. Now, now Jacob didn't pick this fight. The angel, the man, picked this fight. And Jacob said, I won't let go until you bless me. Uh, God, and Jacob being just talking uh, about some ordinary blessing. I, I'm not talking about a blessing just because you sneeze, uh, but a blessing, uh, uh, God, that's going to change your life. Uh, he, I'm holding on because I know that there is a blessing connected to my ability to hold on to God's promise. Uh, uh, God, uh, yeah, I'm not just asking for some ordinary blessing, uh, uh, God, but this is something uh, that only God can do. Uh, that's why in Galatians, God makes it clear uh, uh, that the blessings of Christ Jesus uh, is bigger and greater than material things. Uh, uh, God, uh, and what some of us are waiting and holding on to God for, uh, man can do it, woman can do it. I need a blessing from God. Uh, when you just type that in, uh, I need a blessing uh, from God. Uh, I need a blessing from God. Now, now, now hear me out there, there used to be a song that, that we used to sing that said, any way you bless me, I'll be satisfied. That's a doggone lie. If I ask for a car, I don't want a boat. If I ask for a house, I don't want a studio apartment. I, I, got a, I want a blessing. Now, now, if that's where your faith is limited to, that, that's up to you. You can keep that. But in the book of Matthews, the seventh chapter, uh, uh, Jesus says, now, if earthly fathers know how to give gifts to their children, now, how much more does your heavenly father know how to give gift to, gifts to those who ask for it? Uh, Jacob 
Jacob is holding on because he needs a blessing. How God, not just some ordinary blessing. How God, how God, but he's asking for a blessing. And I don't know who it is, but I want you to know that what you've been praying God for, don't you feel that it's too big? Don't you feel, no, 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 no. What you are asking God for, he can do it. Ask him to bless you. How God, and Father, Father, help me to never be afraid for you to do, ask you to do the impossible. I, I believe there's some folks uh, that said, God, I need you to do the impossible. I, I need you to not just open up doors. I need you to open up roads. I, I need you to open up places. Uh, uh, God, uh, I believe Jacob had a conversation with himself uh, and said, after all I've been through, uh, uh, God, uh, being attacked, everything I had to face, uh, uh, I think Jacob came to the place in his life, look, uh, if anybody encounters my life in this season, uh, uh, God, you're going to either, either make me better uh, or bless me further. Uh, how can I say it again? Uh, you get to a point in your life uh, that you're going to have people encounter you. Uh, you're going to say either you're going to make me better or bless me further. You, you can keep your roses, keep your chocolate, uh, keep your fake gold necklace. Uh, uh, but I need a blessing, blessing. Uh, I need a blessing from the Lord. Uh, what kind of blessing was Jacob talking about? Uh, Jacob was talking about about a name changing blessing. Uh, uh, God, uh, uh, he, he, he's talking about a name changing blessing, uh, a life changing blessing, a uh, heart changing blessing, a uh, family changing blessing, a uh, financial status changing blessing. Uh, uh, God, I want to talk to somebody uh, uh, because I want you to know uh, because you've been holding on, uh, you can't let go. Uh, your next blessing uh, is connected to your ability uh, to keep connecting to God. Uh, I want to pray for you right now because God has a blessing for you eyes have not seen ears have not heard neither has it into the heart of man what God wants to do for you I want you to know that you might have some difficult moments you may have some difficult days you might have to go to the mat for some things you you might have to fight for something you 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 might have to fast for some things but this is one thing I won't do. I won't give up until you bless me. Now, my time is up. The story is not ended, but my time is up. And we're going to finish this story uh, next week. And we can we finish next week. But, but I want you to know, oh God, I want you to know that your next blessing is connected to your ability to stay connected. I ain't letting go until you bless me. God wants to bless his children. God wants to bless your life. You are the first and not the last. The head and not the tail. The Bible says the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and addeth no sorrow. There's a blessing coming your way if you hold on. There's a blessing coming your way if you hold on. There's a blessing coming your way if you hold on. I won't let go until you bless me. Father, I love you. Father, I praise you. I thank you, God. Even if we have to rest, even if we have to go to the mat about some things, we won't let go. Tell you blessings. The ultimate blessing, God, is salvation. Perhaps there's someone who does not know the Lord as their Savior. Today is a good day for you to give your life to Christ. Don't worry about it. You're not in the building. It's not an accident that you clicked on. God wants to come into your life. He said, if you believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. I mean, life is going to be perfect. If that's you and you want more information, just type the word me and one of our leaders will reach out to you. I won't let go until you bless me. Have a great week. Have a blessed week. Have a strong week. Thank you for all of those who continue uh, to sow your seed of generosity into the ministry, allowing us to continue to carry out the Great Commission, uh, allowing us to help those that are in need allowing us to continue to do uh, what is needed for the house of God. If you have a heart of God and if you'd like to sow a seed, I ask that you would check 
our platform. We have several online platforms and other ways that you can sow your seed. If you have a heart for the house, please pray about it. Be intentional about your giving because we understand that every seed that leaves our hands never leaves our life. And so we ask that you would pray and be intentional about your giving, sowing your seed. And again, we thank you for all your generosity. God bless you. For more information about our church and to connect with us, please check our website out at InsideBeulahBC.org. To stay connected with us and to receive our weekly e-newsletter, please text BBCLPA at 22828. Again, if you want to receive our weekly newsletter, text BBCOSPA to 228. If any congregational care arises, please do not hesitate to reach out to your congregational care team or call us at 717-939-58.